For fuck's sake, would you just shut the fuck up? I'm trying to record a screencast here, okay? I'll talk to you in a minute. Hi, I'm Greg, and I'm here to talk about Vim. Uh, specifically today, I want to talk about italics in the terminal. Now, when I first started using Vim full-time in a serious way, I started by using MacVim because it was really slick. It had fast rendering, it had italics, uh, it had perfect mouse integration, obviously, because it was a GUI app. And then I got a job where I had to work editing files that were hosted on a machine in a room across the other side of the building. And that meant I had two choices. I could either SSH into that machine and learn how to use Terminal Vim, or learn how to live with Terminal Vim, or I could set up an elaborate rsync kind of setup or a remote disk thing where I would mount a drive from another machine on my local laptop. Uh, that kind of sucked, both the rsync approach and the, the mounting approach. And when I started using a terminal multiplexer, uh, Tmux, which you've seen me use in these screencasts, I realized that it was actually a powerful way to combine terminal utilities and my editing in a single unified kind of seamless experience and I started working on getting Tmux and Vim and the terminal to work together in such a way that they gave me all of the niceties of the GUI that I appreciated uh, but enabled me to do it in a versatile way such that I could SSH into another machine and have all my stuff there set up the way I liked and then I could work locally on my laptop on another occasion and have exactly the same experience. And so in fact, I use Tmux in the terminal even when I'm editing files on the local drive and it's identical to the experience that I have when I work over the network. So that is a kind of roundabout way of talking about why I value the, the terminal. But let's talk about italics um, specifically and some of the other things that a terminal can be made to do that make it more like a GUI I'll cover in other screencasts. But just today I'm gonna to talk about terminal italics. Um, so I've opened this file because I know it's got some comments in it and if you look at the top there you'll see that these comments are in italics. That's really the only purpose that having italics serves in the terminal. But I happen to really like this. I really appreciate it. And once I'd noticed that MacVim had italic comments and Terminal Vim didn't have them, I just couldn't, couldn't rest until I figured out how to make it happen. Um, so I'm going to show you how I made it happen. And these instructions are going to be specific to OS X. But in theory, you should be able to do this on Linux for sure. Windows, I have no idea what's possible. Uh, but I'll at least show you how I do it on OS X. So I'm going to include a link to these dot files in the show notes. But these are my dot files up on GitHub. And it's probably a little bit over-engineered, but basically I'm using Ansible to do the configuration. Um, Ansible is kind of like Chef, Puppet, Salt. It's a kind of item-potent, declarative system configuration tool that you can use to configure hosts over a network, but you can also use them to configure the local machine. And that's the principal use that I have for it here. And you divide your configuration into different groups. And the one that we're interested in here is this term, in, term info configuration. Uh, term info is effectively a database of capabilities that applications can use to figure out how to present things to the user. So for example, if an application wants to print something in italics, it can ask the term info database, how do I print something in italics? And the term info database will give it the appropriate escape sequence, or it will say, I can't do that, in which case you don't have italics. So what these files here do is set up term info files necessary to enable italics. So let's have a look at how this works. Uh, and I'll just, I don't expect you to know how Ansible works, but I'll, I'll show you the, the way it's, um, I'm using it to do this. Effectively, I'm just running this tick command. My understanding, if I recall correctly, is that tick stands for term info compiler, basically compiles these term info files and installs them. So it's basically going to take three template files that I have um, for three different kinds of terminal, and it's going to compile them and install them into uh, the term info path. The term info path is set here in my defaults. It is just dot term info, which is a default location. So other programs know to look through or, or, or some system library knows to look at this location such that whatever you install in here is reflected in the database. Um, so we're, we're really just taking these three files that you can see here and 
running them through the compiler and installing them. So what this basically says, and I'll make it a little bigger just to make it really clear, basically says take the existing Xterm256 capabilities from the database and add some capabilities to it. This here stands for the start italic capability. So it's basically going to send this escape sequence to start italics. And reset italic basically means turn off italics and it's going to send this escape sequence. And for everything else it's just going to use the Xterm256 uh, term info capabilities. And we've got a similar thing for the Tmux term. Um, once again for starting and resetting italics but also for this standout which is basically inverse text like you'll see when you run less and you have a prompt down the bottom of less. And uh, that one you'll notice is based on the screen term info entry um, and these are the only differences from it. And the last one is Tmux256 color. Basically the same but instead of being based on screen it's based on screen 256 color. So you could do this by hand. You don't have to use Ansible to do this, but I'm going to show you what happens when I use Ansible to do this. Um, I'm going to run install because I have a little wrapper script which I was just looking at, and I'm going to say term info. And this install script could do all manner of things for me, like installing software, updating Vim. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Everybody in the world now knows the first letters of my uh, <laughs> my password, so I'm going to have to change it. <laughs> Terrible. Um, Anyway, as I was saying, this can install software, it can configure Vim, it can build you complete me, it can update whatever I want, but specifically now I'm getting it to install those term info files. And as noted in the readme that I had here, you can confirm that it's working after you've done that by running this, and you'll see that it's able to basically issue the start italic sequence, print something in italics, turn off the italics, then turn on the standout mode, printed word, and then turn off the standout mode. Um, and the reason this works is because I'm inside Tmux, and that's what my term is. If I drop out of this, and now I'm outside of Tmux, the same thing is going to work. Although my term here is not the same. It's Xterm256 color. So the last piece of the puzzle here, not that it's really a puzzle, is telling iterm that you want to use italics. So I believe it's going to be somewhere in here. You can tell that I yeah, haven't looked for this for a while. Italic text allowed. So it's under profiles, text, and then there's a checkbox for italic text allowed. So as far as I know, it doesn't work in terminal app. I have heard of terminals in which you can do this on Linux. I think RxVT might be one. Um, there might be a, some kind of term, but maybe the Ubuntu terminal app. I haven't used Linux um, as a desktop operating system for a long time, so I can't remember. But that's basically how you get italics in the terminal. So I hope you enjoyed the screencast.